Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers and welcome to the final part of my Tainted Grail Fall of Avalon painting series, part number four. And in this one I'm going to take three of the monsters slash creatures slash spiritual creepy things from this game and show you how to paint them. Now, let me tell you something right from the start. If you're looking for a painting masterclass, please go elsewhere. You won't find it here. Now, if I sit down and I spend lots of time on a miniature, I am capable of, of churning out a pretty good paint job. I've been doing it for a long time. But these days, I find myself more and more wanting to paint my miniatures quickly. And that's because I have so many of them and so many games. And so to get through big sort of Kickstarter campaigns like this, to get them all painted and on the tabletop, I use some speed painting techniques. So you don't end up with miniatures which look fantastic when you look up at them really closely and you see them from every, every angle and you, you know, like go, wow. The idea instead is to put them on the tabletop at normal viewing distance. They look great. They enhance the game. They do what they're designed to do. So they're not display pieces, they're gaming pieces. So in this video especially, I'm going to paint these very, very quickly and pretty roughly, but they'll still look good at the end and they'll still look good on your table. If there's one thing I've noticed over the years is that when you're actually playing with a miniature, you don't study the miniature, you play with it. It's down there at normal viewing distance. And uh, as long as it good, looks good from that distance, then it does its job. So I hope you agree with me on that score. If you don't, this isn't the video for you, but if you do, stay tuned and let's go through painting a few miniatures from Tainted Grail. And at the end of this video, you'll have all the techniques you need to go on and paint the rest yourself. So I've got three figures here that I'm going to paint just as an example of doing some of the monsters from Tainted Grail. First one comes in the core set and it's called a Four Dweller Spirit. And here's the card for it. And then from the monster box, we've got a weird bear. This weird looking thing. Now I've undercoated these all in black, but I've just recently done a bit of black retouching on some of the areas the spray didn't get to. You want to give it a nice all over coating of black and get into all those difficult to reach spots. Here's the wear bear card, a weird bear, I should say. And then finally the weird child. This is it here which is uh, pretty creepy. And for some of you who are sensitive to these things, be aware that uh, there's kind of some dark themes here. Um, so uh, just be aware of that. It's uh, an adult game, definitely. Um, and uh, this is sort of a ghost carrying, uh, sort of ghost baby or something. It's eesh. So, um, but it's a good example of uh, using dry brush and simple techniques. And for all of these, I am going to be using very simple techniques. And there are two reasons for that. One is that I want to do them pretty quickly and I don't want to spend way too much time on detail. So I'll be using things like dry brushing and washes to do them quickly. And the other thing is, if you look at the artwork um, for these, you can see there's not a whole lot of color in there. There might be a focal point like that or the uh, exposed flesh on this creature or the sort of glowing that's coming out of the Four Dweller Spirit, that sort of spirit glow. There's a, there's a focus to it, and then the rest of it is just kind of, you know, browns and greys and blacks and things like that. And that's the kind of thing I want to capture with these miniatures. I don't want to go trying to paint them too realistically. They're strange spirit-affected creatures. Uh, they've been affected by the weirdness which is taking over the land. Um, and I want to paint them quickly, so uh, I'm taking a cue from the artwork to, to keep it simple. So starting with the Four Dweller Spirit, I want him to be mostly black, but I also want this spirit glow to come out. So I'm going to paint some of the areas of the figure white and then uh, give them a wash later on with Niclac Oxide, which will give me that spirity, ghostly glow feeling. Um, and then we'll see where we go from there. So I'm starting off with Corax White. Some of that on the palette. So I'm going to dab this white over some of the extremities to give me a basis for what I'm going to wash later in the oxide paint. So on his hands, around the face, and actually just within that collar so it'll look like it's glowing out from under the armour. 
It's a very rough application. Some from that lantern, so we can have it glowing out of the lantern. And that might reflect on his leg a little bit too, so we'll put a bit on his leg. As though it's reflecting there. On these hands as well. It's always handy to have a pair of tweezers on hand because sometimes a bit of uh, fluff or something might have got caught on the miniature when you did the priming. So if you've got some tweezers you can clean that up. I'm going to do a bit more here in the gaps of the armour as well just so it's going to be leaking out of this strange armour he's wearing. I think that'll do. So I'll let that dry. Now I'm taking some Abaddon Black and wiping most of it off on a paper towel and I'm just going to dry brush over the tops of these areas so the white goes back into the recesses and also I blend some of the white areas into where they join with the black. So it's a bit more of a subtle graduation. Before I put on the wash though, I'm going to dry brush the rest of the figure with a slight bit of grey just to bring out this black detail a bit. So for that I'll use Eschen Grey. And I want to be quite subtle about this, so I wipe most of it off. And then just dry brush some of the black. So this is very subtle. Now I've done that, I'll use something a little bit lighter. I might just mix a little bit of Corax White with that. And I can even mix it on my piece of paper towel here. And then just do the very lightest highlights, just a little bit, quite subtle, just to make that lift a bit. A little bit of the cloak. You can see I'm just giving that the very lightest dry brush. That just gives the whole figure a little bit more body, a bit more definition. Right, I'll let that thoroughly dry. Now I'm going to use Niclac Oxide for my spirit ghosty effect. Let's see if this works. A generous amount where all the white is. And I don't want it to go on the highlights too much, so I'm going to soak it up a little bit. Mix a bit of water with my brush so I can dilute it and soak it up. You can see I'm wiping paint off my paper towel and then I can use the dry brush to soak up the excess. Right, I'll let that dry. Now that's dry, I'm going back to black and doing a bit of subtle black dry brushing over some of these areas. And this makes it look as if that glow is coming from within the figure between the cracks of the armour. And I'll also do the same on the face very carefully. There we go, he's starting to look suitably creepy. Now I'm going to add a bit more detail to the figure and I'm starting with Rune Lord Brass and I'll use this to paint the main belt area. So he's got this sort of round medallion in front of his belt painting that brass. Then some other metallic areas with lead belcher, a nice dark metallic paint. And I'll paint the blades of his spears. 
and the uh, hook weapon that he's carrying. And you can see here just where there are areas of the sort of spirit color. I'm just dabbing in little bits of metal as though it's shining through the metal. A few dabs also on the chain, just to give a little suggestion of metal there. And then painting in the uh, bits of chain mail hanging from his waist. At least I think they're chain mail. Just very roughly painting. Once those areas are dry, I'll wash them with Agrax Earthshade. Then I mixed up a highlight colour, Temple Guard Blue, a little bit of Sybarite Green, and some White Scar. Mix that together to get this colour, which is close to the uh, Nikak Oxide, or whatever it's called. Ah, oh, these Games Workshop names, they drive me... You can never remember them, they're unbearable. <laughs> So that colour is quite close and I'm using that as a highlight colour. So I'm just painting on a few very thin highlights all over the figure, which just give an impression of that kind of reflected spirit light. And really just a few detailed highlights like this can give the impression that a figure is painted a lot better than it actually is. You don't have to paint everything very, very carefully, but if you paint a few focus areas very carefully, the eye will be drawn to them. Just painting some very sharp edge highlights here with that colour. There's some detailed wrapping on the haft of the weapon here, but just a few small strokes gives the impression of those things being highlighted. Another thing that can make a paint job look a little bit better than it is, is a good base. So I'm using Dryad Bark as the base colour and roughly dry brushing that all over the base. Now for all this uh, dry brushing on the base, I'm bringing some of it over on the actual figure onto the feet and the cloak of the figure. And this kind of uh, embeds the figure itself into the base. It looks like it's been walking around in the mud and the grime. And even though this is a ghost, it still works pretty well. The next dry brush is Steel Legion Drab. A lighter dry brush this time. Of course I wait for the first layer to dry thoroughly. And again I'm carrying this over onto the feet and cloak of the figure. The final layer is a Shabti bone. Well when I say final I mean almost final. A little touch of white to get even just a, a tinier lighter highlight as well. Just a little bit of that. Very light dry brush. There you have it. And you can see how he looks like he's been striding through the mud and the grime and the dirt. And it gives the figure a little bit more character. Finally, a black around the edge just to neaten it up. The next one is the Weird Child. And for this one, I'm going to rely pretty much on dry brushing. Um, you might want to get some better dry brushes, brushes than these. These are getting a bit old and tired, but I tend to repurpose old brushes by cutting them back and turning them into dry brushes. This isn't too bad. Uh, for the basis of this one, I'm using Storm Vermin Fur to start with. So get that on the brush, wipe most of it off. And then just my first overall dry brush. And the main focus of light is going to be in the middle here, so that's where I'm concentrating on. 
and then just going out and giving the whole figure a very light dry brush to pick out the detail. Even a bit down on this cloudy area at the bottom. This will just be swirling smoke. And this figure certainly has a Guillermo del Toro Pan's Labyrinth kind of feel. Very creepy. That's a basic one. Then I'll go to Bane Blade Brown. And again, be quite subtle with this. The main light again coming from the center of the figure and then just radiating outwards. We want that to be our light source. A little bit on the back. There are all these bones here, so I'll highlight those. There we go. I'll let that dry. While that's drying, I can use some Zandri dust and paint in the central little baby figure and mix that with a bit of water. Just paint that in. Like that. Time now for an Agrax Earthshade wash on that area. And I can also use this to deepen some of the shadows where I've dry brushed. Now I'm going back to a Shabti bone to dry brush those bones on the back a little bit more. Make them stand out more. This is quite a heavy dry brush. And while I'm there, I'll just put a little bit more on the edge of the front of the cloak as well. When that's dry, I'll give it a wash with Agrax Earthshade. Now I'm going to mix a bit of Cadian Flesh Tone with the Ashabti Bone already on my palette to give me a lighter fleshy colour and use that to highlight the baby figure. While I'm there, I'll use some of the same colour to paint in some of the folds of the cloak around it and that way we unify the figure with the cloak around it as though it's casting the light onto the cloak and make this central part of the figure the visual focus of the paint job. A bit of the Ashabti bone to highlight bits of the bone on the back. Little highlights like this just make those little shapes pop out a bit more. Then I'll paint in highlights starting with Eshen Grey and working up to a lighter grey for the smoke at the figure's base. These are quite rough and just painted in freehand. I've already started mixing that with white as you can see to get lighter highlights. I want these to be relatively contrasting. And there you go, a very simple paint job but sufficiently creepy. Perhaps just a few very small little white dot highlights just to lift it a little bit more. For the weird bear, the first thing I want to do is pick out the detail as I did with the last one and I'll also be using storm vermin fur for that one. And I'll go a bit heavier with the dry brush this time. So I want this figure to be a little bit lighter than the other ones. So 
So you could almost call it a bit of a, a wet dry brush really. Just keeping some of the black in the shadowed areas underneath the legs, things like that, but in generally giving a pretty overall coat of storm vermin fur. Now I'm going to start painting in those fleshy areas with Bugman's Glow and a pretty rough application of this just to all the areas where the flesh is exposed and there are eyes, etc. I'm not applying this carefully, it's pretty rough and I don't care if I go over into the grey a little bit. Next it's good old Ashabti Bone again, so I use this colour a lot. And with this I'm painting the skull or exposed skull or skulls at the front of the werebear. A weird bear, I keep calling it a werebear but it's actually a weird bear. W-Y-R-D. Then I'll use Dryad Bark to paint the bits coming off his back. I'm actually not sure whether they're stone or... I think they are stone, but actually I'm painting them a kind of dark browny grey colour anyway. I'm not really worried what they are. They could be stone or wood. It's an unholy abomination, whatever the thing is. But this is a good base colour. Now that's dry, it's time to get the very useful Agrax Earthshade and give this an all over wash. Well, all over except for the flesh areas. For those I'll be using Reichland Flesh Shade. And you can see by doing all this very roughly, I'm getting an all over variation in base tones, but still keeping all the detail by picking it out with the washes. And then after all this is done, I can decide what level of effort I want to put into the highlights. Just enough to bring the miniature alive. Once that's thoroughly dry, it's time for some highlighting. For the flesh areas, I'll start with Bugman's Glow again. And just start hand painting some of those tendons and fleshy areas. I quickly added a little bit of white to that to make it a bit lighter. And then later on added a little bit of Mephiston Red too to make it a bit more red. Of course you don't need to be too precise with any of this. It's just um, adding some depth and relief to these textured areas. Here I'm adding some Mephiston Red to get a pinkier tone. Then I'm painting in the eyeballs with straight white. This took a couple of coats so I had a nice clean white. Then a Shabti Bone again. And I'm highlighting the bits of bone and skeletal areas that are popping out the top along the backbone and then of course the skull. Add some white to that Shabti bone to highlight even further. Now I'm mixing some Steel Legion Drab with my Dryad Bark and highlighting up those strange growths. This is quite a kind of rough wet brush kind of technique. Just get some colour on there but keep some of the darker tones visible as well. It's very rough but then again this is a rough kind of surface that we're painting. Then I go a little bit lighter to, to just the Steel Legion Drab. And then I'll highlight it even further by adding a Shabti Bone. And you can see this is where a wet palette is really useful because you've got all those colours to choose from on your palette. You can mix and match them on your palette and then onto the figure. Now 
with some straight storm vermin fur mixed with a little bit of white. I'm then painting in a few wrinkles on the body itself. And using the grey store steel legion drab browny grey mix that I just happen to have lying around on my palette, I'll paint in this bit of flesh or material that's hanging down here. It's probably flesh, isn't it? Hang bit folds of flesh where the insides are exposed. So it goes well with the rest of the flesh colour. Bit of a shabty bone on a couple of exposed rib cage uh, ribs there. Um, it's a horrible thing, really, isn't it? shouldn't really be alive. A few black dots for pupils on the eyes. Ugh. And when that's dry, I'll shade the eyes with Reichland Flesh Shade. Since everything's so gory in this area, a bit of blood for the blood god is probably appropriate, just to make it a little bit more disgusting. But don't go overboard on this stuff because you can very easily overdo it. Next up I'll use my usual mixture of greys to roughly dry brush the rocks it's sitting on, working up to lighter greys. And while I was there I also dry brushed the fur hanging around its neck. There's a bit of greenery built into the base as well, so some Caliban green is dry brushed onto that. And then I highlighted that with a bit of Avaland Sunset added to the green. Finally, I washed the rock areas with Agrax Earthshade. Always good to give rock a bit of a wash with Agrax Earthshade because it adds a bit of brown to the recesses of the rock, makes it look a bit more realistic. And they're done. Three creatures from Tainted Grail. Now, I could have spent a lot longer on doing these three miniatures. Really, if I hadn't been filming and without drying time, this would take oh, not even an hour, really. Um, and you can do this very quickly. And look, from a close up, you can see it's a pretty messy paint job. But if you get back at the distance that you'll normally be viewing these from, they look great on the tabletop. And I guarantee you will not be worrying about it when you're playing. You won't be looking at them and thinking, gee, I wish I'd spent another three hours on those. You'll be enjoying the game. These will look great and they will get the atmosphere across and do the job they were designed to do, which was to enhance your game. Of course, if you enjoy painting and you have the time, you can spend a lot more time on these miniatures and do a much, much better job than this. And I could too, if I could uh, set aside the time. But I wanted to paint these pretty quickly and I'm pleased with the results and I think I'll continue to use these techniques for the rest of the monsters so I can get the whole set done fast. We've all got a huge backlog of figures and we really have to decide which ones we want to spend a long long time on and which ones we want to paint pretty quickly. So uh, I encourage you to do that and then you'll get through your figures a lot faster. Here's a couple more I've painted since finishing the tutorial. And this is how good they'll look when you set them up during your games of Tainted Grail. Hope you've enjoyed this. I will see you next time. This is the Esoteric Order of Gamers, orderofgamers.com. You know where to find me. Thanks very much for watching and enjoy Tainted Grail. It's a great game. I'll see you next time. Bye.